And now, as billed in TV Times, the last ever edition of Spitting Image. I am the great and all-powerful Thatcher. At least I was until I snuffed it. I speak to you from the flames of hell. I've been given special permission by the boss himself. Mr. Beelzebub, I said, a much misunderstood figure, in my opinion. Mr. Beelzebub, the BFI are showing spitting image. Yes, he said, it's the devil's work. You see, Mary Whitehouse was right. She's next door, by the way. So, whenever it appears on the screen, do not laugh, do not giggle, do not even give in to the smallest of Kenneth Baker's smirks, because the punishment here is terrible. I have my duties in this place. Coming, Mr. Heath. This first panel comprises, could you please come to the stage, Lord Hattersley, Lord Steele, Harry Enfield, Steve Nallen, and Ian Hislop. What we're going to do is soak the ring. No, no. And here's the man who's going to do it, Roy Hattersley. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Hello, this is the modern progressive Neil Kinnock speaking into his cordless telephone. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Yes, indeed. And may I say, David, that I can't help noticing you bear an uncanny resemblance to Michelangelo's David. Really, David? It's the proud features, the strong jaw, and the athletic physique. Hmm, come to think of it, David, you're remarkably similar to Michelangelo's David as well. Oh, do you think so? Yes, you've got no balls at all. Oh, David! <laughs> David, it's very good of you to be here tonight. A very game with you. I've not had such a round of applause since a Sheffield rally. <laughs> How does it feel looking at how, how does it feel looking at, 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 at that now? Does it feel better than it did watching it in the day? Well, as it it, were? for me, it didn't feel better at the time. I actually enjoyed the show, um, partly because of my character. I mean, I was a b benign old duffer who got everything wrong. I was the elderly man from next door who came to set up the Christmas train set and fused all the lights so they couldn't have a Christmas dinner. And I was also this rather benign figure who was rather worried about nephew Neil. I would almost bad you from Wind in the Willows. Now, if I'd been Kenneth Baker, a slug sliming my way through the Garden of Life, I might not have enjoyed it so much. That's why he's not here. That's why he's <laughs> here. <laughs> well, the other thing you have to remember, I am the eponymous hero. I'm the one who spits. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about the spitting, because that's quite, you know, sharp. It's quite personal. Well, it's, it's like classical cartoons. I have a slight speech impediment. Um, it isn't spitting, but cartoons always ex uh, increase this impediment. I mean, I've got a very small wart here. Every uh, cartoon that we wrote about me had a huge wart covering <laughs> off my face. That's what cartoons do. And, and sometimes it helped. I, I remember speaking to a conference of policemen, and shadow cabinet or cabinet ministers weren't popular with the police force. In the front row, every policeman took out an umbrella when I began to <laughs> speak. <laughs> Uh, uh, David, uh, David, uh, I think Roy's... My, my, my staff were horrified by this. Actually, it broke the ice. It was a bloody good thing it happened. It was yeah. a very good thing it happened. But I noticed that David, um, Roy said that, you know, it's, an, it's, it's not a, a spitting, it's a, it's a speech impediment. And in, in the arena film, which we watched earlier, uh, you say, you know, yeah, I mean, they kept getting at me about being small, but, you know, I, I don't think I'm small. I mean, I'm five foot nine. You know, that, uh, and, a little bit, and a half. <laughs> and a half. <laughs> A little bit Get defensive. Right, Mary, little <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't worry about half inches. No, quite. Oh. <laughs> you should. <laughs> but, 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 but so clearly it d did rankle at some time? Uh, no. 
No, it didn't. I mean, we, we watched it religiously every Sunday evening. It was fantastic. What, you and David? <laughs> <laughs> You two no, yeah, me and my wife. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Were you two Stupid unusual me. in the warmth with which you embraced your caricatures? Us two. I think well, the, there are no Tories here tonight, not for want of asking, I'm told, so maybe we are unusual, I don't know. During the years that Spitting Image was in its prime, the Conservatives got in three times. I will say hey. to people, yes, um, we toppled Thatcher. It took us 11 years. Um, and it was done by her own backbenchers. Um, so we were pretty damn potent. But were you all politically motivated working on it, or were you doing it because it was, you know, for many of you, apart from you being so precocious, for many of you, it was the sort of beginning of your career in... in... I was committed to the, to the overthrow of uh, socialism. A socialism? <laughs> well, you, well, you picked the wrong... <laughs> You know, Steve. Ian, I've always <laughs> liked you for that. <laughs> How much fun was it to make? Really good fun. But it was. I mean, I think for the, the, the producers and, and... Hell for them. I think really it was really fun. hard because really we got the fun, we got to write it, we got to see it happen, and then when it went out, we said, oh, you've messed it up. Um, and, well, you know, g gave them a hard time. Ha but ha it was ha so cute. Steve and I had, you know, it was great fun, wasn't great it? Fun. John can I, can I, have you encountered it, 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 each other before? I'm presuming that we, we you have. We met several times, didn't we, Roy? I mean, <laughs> can I also say that, that uh, I am not only the hero of Spitting Image, <laughs> but I am the, also the hero of Crossroads, because <laughs> for those of us who worked on the show, that is where we recorded the show. <laughs> we recorded the show in Noel Gordon's office. <laughs> you made a very good secretary, by the way. <laughs> I think before we get overcrowded with Recep voice, we'll have a look at some I more thought. clips. <laughs> <laughs> if you could... <laughs> oh, I think everything will be all right. If only I could get a new catchphrase. I mean, nice to see you, to see you nice. Now, that was the Rolls Royce of catchphrases. That's right. It was, it was Shakespeare's King Lear, it was Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue, it was the E equals MC oh. squared of catchphrases. Look, forget the catchphrase, play the ball. Forget the catchphrase, play the ball, play the ball, forget the catchphrase. It's not too special, is it, Charlie? It wasn't suggested. It wasn't suggested, it wasn't suggested, it wasn't. It's hopeless, dear, hopeless. I must do the nap to the chapel. Is it for a particular function, Mark? It's for us, Scott. That's all sneeze in you know. It can be full of royalty and oily torches. So I can't be having none of your crinkling rubbish. Something like this. No, no. I look like Beryl Reed. <laughs> this one's a little different, not to say outrageous. I should cuckoo tosh. You'll be having me look like Carmen Bleeding Miranda. Perhaps, ma'am, something like this. Oh, no, you're talking. I'll have a gruesome. How did you go about finding the, the voices for... For the well, I, I remember going uh, again going up to John and saying, Could I, would you mind if they made Alan Bennett? Because I, I come from Leeds and, and I always fancied doing Alan Bennett, so I worked on it and everything. <laughs> and what was really lovely about John, and he said, um, Oh, do you know, I, the problem is, Steve, I, I really like Alan Bennett. <laughs> Uh, anyway, he, he, he got made, and the thing about the Alan Bennett and the Thora Heard, which Kate Robbins did, um, was the fact it, it sort of leavened the show, you know what I mean? So you could have these very political, bouncy sketches and hitting and Punch and Jude and all the rest of it, and then you'd have this little moment of, of sort of Asda Green Label and eating Jabby Dodgers. <laughs> well, well, actually, in, the in the film earlier, I mean, there's rather unfairly, it said when Grant and Naylor appeared on the scene, um, the show went down market. Yeah. Actually, Nick and I had been working on the show from day one. Um, Desperately thinking we trying were up to take market. it down market. Uh, <laughs> and they suddenly got to do Larry Gilgood and Alan Bennett and National Treasures. And in fact, the show sort of went up market in a lot of ways. <laughs> was it quite competitive in terms of who was writing what piece and who was claiming what voice? I mean, how did you decide? How did you decide who got the voice of? Terribly embarrassing. It was embarrassing. But, I mean, you, everyone wanted to be Margaret Thatcher, I would have thought, because she was <laughs> on the most. No, well, but he, he was Margaret yeah. Thatcher. Mm. 
But, but did a that, new did, voice would come. A up. new voice was a tough. And it was day, a literally actually. audition it was auditioned in front of a microphone. And we'd all do it. Yeah, and we'd all do it in order. And, and everyone would look, you mm, know. It was, it was and tough. when John was there, he'd pace around looking at you. Go. I tried and the Alan Bennett voice, but um, <laughs> I didn't get it. And, and did you have? And, but did you have? But well, did you have understudies aside from Ian? Because, I mean, you know, well, what would well, happen if you well, had tonsillitis well, yeah. or something? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it then. I'd do people... I didn't do Hasse. I did Kinnock a couple of times. I loved doing it. Did you get when to do... A, a, well, the, the, one I, the one I'm sort of... Um, I'm most proud of, it really, is, isn't Thatcher. It's um, Robert Ronsey, because it was what Harry was saying. Because my Robert Ronsey impression wasn't that accurate. And also, Robert Ronsey spoke incredibly slowly, <laughs> and it would have been a disaster to have the puppet like that. So we had a chat with, with John, and um, and sort of, because he was a little puppet in the same way, we sort of made him like that. He sounded nothing like it, but it was sort of truthful right, to it. Yeah. And he was he was a little seven-year-old boy who believed in Santa Claus and <laughs> and really you know if there wasn't a Santa Claus who'd feed the reindeer <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you think that they're a blander lot these oh, days Roy do you think that they're a blander lot no, these I don't. days no I don't I mean I say I think oh, if, the, on, if, the, right, if the milieu was right <laughs> the, it's not the politicians have changed it's the atmosphere of the country has changed I mean, I don't think it would be acceptable. I don't think they found it as funny now as they did 20 years ago. But if they were in a mood to accept it, then I think the material is there, as I what say. What do you mean that you, they wouldn't find it as funny, they wouldn't accept it? You well, mean because it was new. It was new. Uh, mm. It was sensational in that nobody's ever been that rude to politicians before. And it's a great Not sport. on television. Not, Not on, on television. television. No, only in private. Only in <laughs> private. <laughs> oh, no, and, and, and in newsprint. Yes, I mean, yeah. people had been that rude and done that sort of stuff. But it, it hadn't had a huge... Prime time audience, exactly. and that was that was well, that was the week had the same thing in but the sixties. But well, that was the week you didn't have the affront really of it. You're too young to remember it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> could but, I but, could but, I say a few words? Oh, from, do please. From beyond the grave. <laughs> I think the problem is that, you know, Margaret Thatcher was an incredibly conviction politician. Yes. That is the point. Uh, <laughs> David Cameron is not a conviction politician. He wants to be everyone's friend. He's too friendly. You know, the, he'd, he's the sort of man that would call John the Baptist Jack. You don't <laughs> want <laughs> a conviction. You, you are admitting a terrible fault or a terrible weakness. I mean, you're admitting that what mattered was the sound of the voices. Now, the sound of the voices is very important, but what mattered really was the portrayal of the people. How was it? Well, but, but, I mean, if you, if, you did, if you did Miliband, you obviously you'd need that very adenoidal sound. Uh, but the thing about uh, Miliband as well is, is, is he stresses the wrong word in every speech <laughs> because he, <laughs> he's simply trying too hard. You know, he... he well, it's not just about the voice. He's trying too hard, and he can't do it. You and just disproved your own point, though, haven't you? Yeah. Because here you are oh, doing well, shut Miliband. Up, then. Yeah. But I wanted to ask you another thing before yeah, you do shut David up, Miliband. Is, <laughs> is, it, is it right that at the beginning the thought was to have the puppeteers uh, also do the voices? Yeah. And that you were one of the people who tried that. Yeah, well, we, we trained up. And actually, on, on the clip, one of the clips you've seen, is you can actually see uh, the, the microphone actually in one of the puppeteers uh, on the head, because that's how, that's how we did it. It proved impossible, and then all, all the sketches had to be pre-recorded, uh, uh, so that, uh, you know, the, that you could carry on working on the, on the scenes and all the rest of it. But going back to, but going back to I, 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 we'll, we'll both do Cameron and see, we'll see. But, you know, the go problem... Go on, yes, I'll have a go, but, but it's not very good. Um, we've got, we've got, got to get fussy. Britain back to work. We've got to find a way of doing that. And he's got a very slightly posh voice, and he... Um, slightly and, posh? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> well, he, but, he, Your I always, standards have changed <laughs> since but, the uh, old days. But he's, he's, he's like a, a son of Catherine Whitehorn, who'd sort of, you know, gone off to a grammar school and tried to... <laughs> he's tried to dumb down his, mm. his posh voice. Now, you know, every time it rains, Cameron comes on telly and says it's rained and we've got to do something about it. You know, and... and it's everywhere. just everywhere. would never happen. Yeah. It's like watching morning television all day long. <laughs> you know, it, and there was a gravitas that isn't there, so there was something to sort of get hold of. And on that depressing there. note, I'd like to thank all of you. It's time for our next panel. Thank you very much, Lord Hackersley. <laughs>